name is Jude Suryano. I am Caden Hire. And I'm Carissa Humphrey, and today we'll be informing you guys about the fisheries of hogfish. So starting off with their name, hogfish get it from their elongated pig-like snout and from the way they root around on the seafloor looking to dig up crustaceans. And in Spanish, the common name is doncea de pluma, which means feathered maiden, which is kind of referencing their long, uh, their long fins. Hogfish are, of course, protogenous, meaning that they begin life as female and become male as they mature. So in this dynamic, they live in these harems where there's one big male and then all of the females, and then obviously if that male ever dies or the female matures, they'll replace that, uh, that male hogfish. The hogfish's protogenous biology also reminds us a lot of the gag grouper, who, which is also protogenous and is a very important fishery. So obviously we need to recognize that with a um, protogenous fish, the stock management can be a little more difficult because we have to consider how males and females group together, as well as the fact that um, in, when you fish a stock, the largest fish are fished out first, of course. So that will include mainly the males, and we obviously need enough breeding males to sustain the population. So the breeding of hogfish occurs during um, winter and springtime, and the peak of that is in the months of March and April. And it's also important to note that they externally fertilize, which means that the female releases her eggs into the water while the male um, fertilizes them. Although females can only spawn a few times a season, the, male makes, the males can spawn several times a day. So with hogfish, their spawning occurs later in the day towards like the evening and dusk time and the males can be quite territorial, but not just during the time that they are breeding, but kind of just in the whole spawning season altogether. So that can impact how you fish it, because obviously a more territorial fish might go after your bait more often. And because of that, we're gonna have to consider how that will impact our regulations and how we fish it. The range of the hogfish is the uh, is, fr is from the warm coastal waters of the Bermuda to North Carolina, all the way down to the Strait of Florida, the Car Caribbean Sea, and the coastal Gulf of Mexico. Its habitat includes open waters and coral reefs at depths of three to 30 meters. It's also found along a reefed outskirts and likes places with hard sand and rock bottoms. Bigger hogfish primarily reside in the center of the reef, so like in the main bustling area while smaller hogfish reside in smaller remote reefs, which are also known as patch reefs. It's important to note that the hogfish fishery is a combination of both recreational and commercial fisheries, which both may need unique regulating and consideration. Capture methods for these species include rod and reel, spear fishing, night fishing, drift fishing, and many more. These fish are very hard to catch due to their pig-shaped snout, they strike fast, so fast reflexes are necessary, and historically speaking, hogfish have been primarily caught by divers spearfishing, but they feed on crustaceans, so anglers love dropping large live shrimp down to offshore reefs on the west coast of Florida. So the limits as set by the FWC are 14 inch fork length in the Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic a little more lax at 16 inch fork length. This can also be impacted by their diet, like what they eat. In 2022, a record hogfish was speared in Florida, weighing in at 24.2 pounds. Um, so in Gulf of Mexico's waters, there's no seasonal limit, as in like the time of the year that you're able to catch the fish. You can catch it year round, but in the Atlantic, the season is only open um, from May to October. And if you remember from what you're we talking about from our spawning season earlier, this is to protect them during their spawning time. The Gulf of Mexico has a daily bag limit of five hogfish per harvester. So if you go on a boat with five people, you can catch 25 hogfish. If you go on with one person, you can catch five hogfish. In the Atlantic, it's a little more strict. The daily bag limit is set at one per person. And in this picture, you can see the, the fishery boundaries of the Gulf and Atlantic. 
the pink area represents the Atlantic fisheries and the blue area represents the Gulf fishery of hogfish. And you can see that there's a cutoff line that separates the Gulf and Atlantic hogfish fisheries. And that, that uh, cutoff is also known as the Cape Sable cutoff. Yeah, so it's important to uh, realize that in between um, the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico stock, is pretty much just water. So an important thing to consider in regulating our hogfish fisheries is that some of our Atlantic stock will mix with some of our Gulf stock right on that Cape Sable line. And in these, in these graphs, you can see the hatch histories of hogfish recreationally. And it, according to the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch, the hogfish is overfished in the Atlantic, which can explain the fluctuation in the graph. Because you can see there's many, there's a, a many peaks and a lot of lows throughout the graph, which can be explained by the somewhat overfishing. And at the top graph is the South Atlantic catch history, and the bottom graph is the Gulf, Gulf catch history. And in this photo, you can see, see the, the commercial catch history of hogfish, which is uh, noticeably less than the recreational catch history. Which can hint, to, which can hint towards a, a higher emphasis and more uh, a higher emphasis on the recreational fishery aspect of hogfish. And this is our yeah, South Atlantic graph, and we also have the Gulf of Mexico graph. Uh, this stuff was provided by NOAA, but we just graphed it out ourselves. So this concludes our presentation on the hogfish. We really enjoyed researching this species. They're fun and they're funny looking. So thank you for listening. Bye.